fellow panelists and uh, industry leaders and academics. Uh, good morning to all of you. I thank uh, the inspired uh, team for the invitation. I'm also relatively new to Bangalore and to the organization, uh, five months old uh, as director of NAC. And as um, director of NAC, of course, we have, of course, taking up certain initiatives, which I'll talk at the end. Uh, I have about eight minutes of time. So first of all, I only wanted to say that um, India is emerging. And um, we look at India as a developed country in the next 15, 20 years. And uh, we become the one of the three largest economies of the world and uh, the education sector or particularly the higher education sector has to drive um, the economic sector and of course as all of you know the national education policy we call as the nep 2020 has um, a bigger role uh, in the whole transformation and uh, uh, talking specifically about nep 2020 um, the, the new policy which is different from the earlier policies in many aspects and one of the important things in the policy is about skill development. And looking at skill development in a broader sense, we look at uh, the core skills for our students, uh, which possibly include the hard skills and soft skills, and the life skills and social skills and so on. And today, the educational institutions whether they are publicly funded by central government or state government and the private universities are putting together their efforts to implement some of the best features of NEP 2020. And when you talk about uh, higher education sector today, within the broader uh, perspective of NEP 2020, the goal is set as 50% uh, GER in a particular time frame. And it is um, possible with the kind of policies rolled out and the kind of resources that are provided to the institutions. I'm sure that we will reach. But the major challenge is how do we m do this numbers of 50% GER? And given the number of colleges, universities, and it's very difficult for us to reach that number. Obviously, we need to look at other modes of reaching students which is online and blended learning and other approaches. And there are um, masses of students uh, located in rural areas, in remote locations. And it, the, the, these places, neither the uh, public sector uh, or the private, nor the private sector is interested to set up campuses. And they become really less privileged for quality education. Therefore, editor companies particularly have a role to reach those uh, masses and it's possible uh, if you are able to create uh, uh, regional language interfaces uh, on the content that you want to develop and given the size of economy that you are talking about uh, in the next 15 20 years and we need a large workforce uh, not necessarily from the workforce coming out of the colleges but also the workforce is currently in working and they need to also look at uh, what we call as upskilling, cross-skilling and reskilling and all that. It is another space for editor companies to work. And the larger higher education policy or uh, education policy should encompass these aspects and integrate uh, the industry in such a way that we are able to achieve what we want to achieve. <clears throat> and of course, many of you may be interested to know uh, what is happening in NAC now um, and those of you from academic will know uh, NAC from a, from a different uh, sense uh, you know more the challenges than the opportunities. Um, today we have uh, close to 44,000 colleges and about 1,200 universities to be um, going for accreditation and we have accredited close to 9,000 colleges and about 4,400 universities as of now. And despite the fact that we brought in a revised accreditation framework in 2017, and we are not able to really achieve the targets. The government is after uh, us and how, when are you going to do this? 
Now, when you accredited uh, 9000 colleges and um, what happens is the colleges which are accredited come for the second cycle after five years or some colleges take up um, reassessments. So it be, the number is increasing. If you um, go 10 steps, then you come down, uh, you know, on the three steps. So therefore, uh, our challenge today is to how are we going to do this? And if you are in academics, you know that um, in the beginning of this uh, year, 2023, uh, Government of India appointed um, Dr. Radhakrishnan, former ISRO chairman, as the chairman of a committee for academic re re sorry reforms in accreditation, assessment, and ranking. And if you are um, by chance have looked at the draft report which was placed for public opinion uh, from June to September, and uh, there are close to thousands of 1,700 meaningful suggestions which are getting incorporated. And the com final uh, report of the committee is soon to be released. In fact, it is currently with me for just doing some final check. And um, now what are we going to do? I mean, I'm only not uh, trying to share what is in the final report, uh, which is ob ob obviously confidential. But what is what was there in the draft report, which was placed in July 2023 in, uh, in the My Government portal and other channels? The first thing that uh, is likely to be done is uh, introduction of binary grading. There are only very few countries in the world uh, looking at uh, the so-called A++ to A+, and grading like that. There are very few countries in the world and we want to go with the global trends and uh, we will introduce what is called binary grading. And there will be one deviation in what other countries are doing in binary accreditation and what India is likely to look at. In other countries, those of you have gone through any of the international accreditation uh, for your universities will know that the benchmarks are set very higher. For If you are an accredited institution, you fulfill a larger, better practices uh, that you have. But unlike those cases in India today, given the masses of institutions and the kind of institutions that we have, obviously we are very large and complex. It is very difficult for us to get these things done as done in very smaller but good countries. So the other one within the binary grading is uh, that uh, we are also likely to have what is called provisional accreditation or accreditation awaited. So let's say in, in a crude sense that uh, an institution get uh, should get 50 marks to get accredited. An institution reaches 47, 48 or something like that. Then we are going to have what is called, um, you know, accreditation awaited. The next is um, all the accredited institution cannot be put in one single basket. So we are introducing very novel approach. Uh, it is a, again as per the draft report is maturity based uh, grading or accreditation, which means there will be level one to level five. And it is those of you in desk leaders, you know, CMM levels and very similar to CMM levels. So you need to fulfill certain requirements and move up to the um, you know, the fifth rank. Today, if you look at in India, institutions like maybe IISC Bangalore or IIT Madras or IIT Bombay will become a level five institution. Those of you know very, um, you know, granular level, the, the manuals and metrics that we use will be different for the different levels of institutions. And the different levels of committees will also set up for this accreditation process. And of course, um, the final point that I want to share is that uh, when we do this uh, 40,000 plus colleges accreditation, the data validation, and we are also looking at uh, using emerging technologies like AI and things like that. If you have read through the report, what is called crowd uh, sourcing of uh, data validation, there is a lot of role for editor companies. And we will partner with wherever applicable, we will partner with those entities and make this transformation happen. Thank you so much.